Hello and welcome to PPM6 TV. Today we've got a viewer's question from Chris Chang who asks about background noise rejection when using a Shure SM7B. Well, the question of background noise um, is a good one. I mean, for two reasons. One, um, the, the internal noise, if you like, generated by the system when using a mic like the SM7B, which uh, does need a lot of gain. But I think uh, more, more to the point here is the amount of acoustic background noise that may be taking place in the room. But we're not going to start with the SM7B. We're going to start with this bad boy here, which is an AKG 414. And the very simple reason for that is the 414 is a multi-pattern microphone. And at the moment, I've got it set on Omni. And what that means is that the, ideally the, 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 the microphone is picking up um, in a spherical shaped uh, pattern, which means uh, sounds from all sides um, get equal gain. And of course, the whole question of rejection is uh, really a question of gain. So if your neighbor is a big T-Rex fan and who can fault their taste, um, you want to know how, do, hang on, we'll pause T-Rex for the moment. Uh, you want to know how do I get rid of as much T-Rex as possible and get as much of the wanted sound um, uh, as we can possibly manage. So um, there's two or, or, or three different elements here. But the first, of course, is the um, polar diagram of the microphone. So um, when I change the polar diagram on the 414, there will be almighty uh, clicks and bangs. But uh, let's just establish that. Uh, let's just establish that again in Omni. This is uh, T-Rex in Omni. And who can complain of that? It's great. Uh, but if I reach out and change this to um, cardioid, we should get quite a bit less uh, T-Rex. Sorry for the edit, but here's the 414 in um, cardioid. And what that does is change the shape of the polar diagram so that the gain structure now has uh, less gain at the back of the mic and more gain at the front. And the, um, the 360 shortcut over there is kind of round to the side, so I'd expect a small but uh, hopefully noticeable difference um, in the polar diagram. In fact, if I went to figure of eight, which then looks like this, and then another sphere on the back of the, the, the diaphragm, it should get even better. Hang on, here we go. Oh, what a great solo. So now we're in figure of eight, and uh, that obviously privileges uh, audio coming from the front of the mic and from the back, and there'll be a dead zone which isn't bad on the on the 414. I think uh, ribbon mics probably the the, the um, uh, have have the best um, dead zones in terms of figure of eight uh, capture, but that again should illustrate um, the issue. Um, there is of course another way of getting um, reducing the background noise, and that is by increasing um, the volume, increasing the gain of the signal on the front of the mic. And we could do several ways we could do that. We could shout. Um, we could uh, 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 move the microphone closer to the source, or of course we could move the source closer to the microphone, the same effect. And that is what the SM7B is going to allow us to do. So we'll leave uh, T-Rex at the same level, we'll drop in the SM7B, and then we'll uh, have a listen to see how much of that we can reject by getting close um, to our microphone, getting our source close to the mic. Hang on a second. A quick mic change and now we've got the SM7B in circuit. So let's start up good old Mark Bolan. Doesn't get old, does it? Anyway, here we are with the SM7B. Now, um, I would suggest to you that that is not the normal working distance of an SM7B. I would suggest the proper working distance is way in here. Okay, now I've got to keep an eye on the gain. In fact, I'm going to reach over and just turn the gain down. Hang on one sec. And then I'm going to bring this over here. How's that? I'm just checking my gain levels. And now, if all is uh, going to plan, Mark Bolin will have got a lot quieter in T-Rex reference to my voice. So one of the questions is, how much background rejection is your microphone? How closely can you work it? Now, if we were to use something like a um, uh, Neumann KM184, uh, A, it'll pop like crazy, and um, you may be able to ameliorate that with a really good pop shield. Hang on a sec. 
and I would recommend the Harkin Pop Killer. I don't have one handy, but they're really, really good. And um, uh, that, that will help. But also you'll start getting a really bad bass tip up um, because they are, uh, as you get closer to the mic, you get a proximity effect, which boosts the bass and all sorts of problems. Whereas the, 7, uh, the 7B is um, absolutely designed for this sort of thing and um, uh, is the way to go. So let's have a listen, Chris, and uh, see exactly, well, I'll have a listen, you've already heard it, but uh, I'll have a listen now and see um, uh, exactly how much rejection we did manage to get with our SM7B. Thanks for watching PPM6. Do come back again. Bye for now.